Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. How to layer Distress Oxide inks and create watercolor backgrounds for two cards with three dimensional flowers. I'm going to start out by showing you how to create the layers of watercolors on the two card backgrounds. I have some Distress watercolor paper and I'm going to be placing it on a Cricut mat which I've cut down. This mat still has a little bit of tack, but not enough to hold material that I need to cut on my machine. Instead of throwing it away, I use them for watercolor projects. It gives me a hard surface to work with, it keeps the paper secure, and it lessens the warping of the paper. I've gone ahead and placed some post-it tape along the edges of the paper. Post-it tape doesn't really hold up to watercolors, but I've run out of my painter's tape, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. The inks I will be using are softer hues. I've chosen spun sugar, tattered rose, scattered straw, shabby shutters, speckled egg, and Victorian velvet. I will be using two flat water brushes to create this first background. One is a little thinner than the other. I have also placed a mixed media mat next to my work surface, and I'm going to be using this as a paint palette for my inks. I've started with spun sugar, and I'll be using the wider brush to sweep some color across my paper. I'm going to create layers of color with these inks. So the first layer is going to be really light and hard to see on camera, but as the inks dry and I blend and layer more color, you'll be able to see the hue start to come through. The next ink color is Tattered Rose, which is a peachy tint. This time I'm using the thinner flat brush to add the color, and I'm going to blend it in with the previous shade. Again, I'm starting out with very little color, and I'm going to build the layers as I go. The next color is Scattered Straw, which is a yellow hue. On this background, I'm creating a rainbow of color with those pastel tints, going in your typical Roy G. Biv order. If you are new to creating striped backgrounds with watercolors, this is the easiest color order to create because it looks natural and the colors blend beautifully together. After adding the yellow and blending it with the previous color, I added more layers of color on the pink and peach tones. And now I'm going to add some green with the shabby shutters. If you want a more intense color with these Distress Oxide inks, you can use less water on your palette of color or use a reinker. The next color after green is the Speckled Egg Blue. Now you're going to see that I continue to blend each of these colors with the colors next to it, and I keep adding more layers of ink as I go. These inks are going to dry with a chalky, opaque finish and have a soft, washed look, which is perfect for spring. The final color is Victorian Velvet, which is a violet color, but it's really intense. I need to add quite a bit of water to this ink to soften up the color. As you add your layers, keep in mind that these inks are also water reactive. If you add more water in some areas, you'll get a pooling effect. And I'm going to show you how to do that on the next card background. At the base of the card, I'm going to bring back that pink color and blend it in with the violet. Once again, I'm adding some more layers of color over each of these stripes to create a richer tone. Once I've finished adding all the layers of colors, I'm going to set this aside to dry and begin working on the next card background. As you can see, I have adhered the watercolor paper onto a Cricut mat and created a border with some post-it tape. This design is going to have some fun, funky geometric shapes, and I'm going to create the background with masking strips. I've cut down these strips to about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to be placing these diagonally onto the watercolor paper. If you don't have masking paper, I have used washi tape in the past, but some washi tapes have caused damage to my paper when I go to peel them off. The first time I attempted this technique, I used post-it tape. Unfortunately, post-it tape is not water resistant, and it ended up warping and bubbling and peeling away as I was adding the watercolor to my background. I have had success with watercolor pencils and post-it tape, 
If you use the pencil palette technique, which I talk about in one of my videos, you can also dry brush your watercolors onto the background. This method does work with post-it tape because it uses less water. Now, these watercolor card blanks have a smooth side and a textured side. I'm using the smoother side for this technique. All right, now that the strips are in place, let's start adding some color. I'm going to use the same colors as before, and I'm going to be adding broken china to the mix for a brighter blue. I want these colors to be more intense, so I'm adding more ink to my mixed media mat, and I'm going to be using less water when I add the color. I'm going to use my flat water brush to pick up the color and fill in each of the shaped areas. Remember, you can always add more layers of color to deepen the hue, but it's not very easy to remove the color if you added too much. So start with a little bit of color and add more layers of ink to deepen the tones to the desired shades. If you want, you can also mix your colors. If you don't own many Distress Oxide inks, you can create your own hues. Simply mix blues and yellows to create greens, or reds and yellows for orange hues, or reds and blues for purples. You can see that I am adding more layers of color to some of these areas. In a few of the blocks, I'm using the same color, but when I add more ink to my brush, I can make it look like there are two different shades of blue because I've added more layers of ink. All right, now that all of the shapes are filled, let's add another layer of color. Do you remember how I told you that these inks are water reactive? I'm going to show you how to create another layer of color using water. So I've grabbed a round water brush and a bowl of water. I'm adding water to my brush and I'm going to drip the water and tap the brush to create pools over the ink. You are going to be able to see these colors fade slightly where the water lands. Some of the areas have large pools while others have splatters. Now I could stop there, but our theme is layers, so I want to add even more layers of color on this background. I'm going to do that with ink splatters. Using my brush filled with water, I'm going to pick up the colors and splatter them over the same colored area. So I'll be splattering pink on the pink, yellow on the yellow, blue on the blue, etc. Now, some of the color will get into the nearby areas, but most of it is going to land in the same color block. If you're worried about getting colors onto the other blocks, you can mask the areas off with paper or post-it notes. I really like how the splatter is getting in the other areas and how the drops of color are reacting with the drops of water that haven't quite dried yet. Now that I've added all my layers of color on this background, I'm going to set this aside to dry and start building our first card. Here is our first background we created with the stripes of muted Distress Oxide inks. I was really worried that the post-it tape would not hold up to the watercolor, which it didn't, but I love that ragged edge it created, so I'm just going to leave it. You can also see that placing it on the Cricut mat lessened the warping. There's hardly any at all, which makes it really easy to adhere to the card base. For the front of this card, I have cut out petals for a tulip using a die set. I have also grabbed the layering guide that goes with this set. It comes in handy when I assemble the flower. Since our theme is layers, I'm going to show you some more layers you can add to these cards in the form of flowers, and I'm going to share a few of my insider flower layering tips with you. When I create layered flowers, I always cut two of the background layers. I like to call one of these my shadow layer. It's usually cut from the same color as the base layer, but I have been known to cut it from a darker color to create a true shadow. I have gone ahead and adhered those shadow layers flat onto my card base, and now I'm going to place the back layers, which are the same shapes, over those shadow layers. As I add that next layer, I'm going to offset it slightly so that the shadow layer barely peeks underneath. This creates a light shadow behind the die cut and gives it even more dimension. All right, now I'm going to add the petal layers to this tulip. 
I'm going to bend some of the petals to give them some dimension and use foam tape between the layers. Now I know I say this almost every time I make flowers, but I love adding lots of layers to my flowers. These cards are going to need to be hand delivered or added to a box with a gift because they are so thick. If you want a flatter flower, you are more than welcome to use less or very little foam tape. Now that I've added the last layer onto my flower, I'm going to work on the center pieces. I want to create dimension on these centers and make them look like stamen and anthers on the flower. I'm going to do this with prills. I've added some glossy highlight to the end of each of the die cuts and then I'm going to pour the prills over the adhesive. Now this dries rather quickly, so after a few minutes I can go ahead and adhere it right to the center of the tulip. There is also a centerpiece, which I believe is the stigma on the flower. I have added a little bit of shading on this with a colored pencil and it's going to layer right on top of those other pieces. The last layer is the leaf piece. I'm going to use a white pencil to add a little definition to these, then I will adhere them to the plant using some foam tape. I cut this leaf out of some darker cardstock to create a little contrast between the stem and the leaf. You could also add some ink to the edges if you wanted more definition. I have gone ahead and placed this down onto the card base and I've stamped a sentiment in black ink. I really should have stamped this before I added the flower because it does look a little ragged, but it's still legible, so I'm just going to chalk it up to being a handmade card. Below the phrase, I'm going to add the word bloom. This is a layered sentiment that has been cut from black cardstock and vellum. I'm going to finish off the design with a few tiny white pearls, and now the card is complete. This is such a stunning design with the white tulip on the faded watercolor background. All right, before I move on to the second card, I have a special announcement from the creative design team. If you have enjoyed these monthly tutorials, then you are going to love our amped up version of weekly classes we are offering you. These classes will inspire you and ignite those creative juices as you learn new techniques and use up the supplies you already own. I'm so excited to be teaching monthly Cricut classes in the group and I can't wait to share those with you. If you want to join this awesome group, go ahead and click on the link down in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and move on to that second card. As you can see, I have already removed the masking strips from the layers of watercolor. Those masking strips created some nice clean lines in between each of the colors. I'm going to back this in some black cardstock to make those pastel colors pop then layer it onto a pink card base using some foam in between the layers. This pink cardstock has been textured using a background plate and added to a standard card base. The tulips for this card are cut from black and gray cardstock. This time I'm going to stamp the sentiment first before I add all of the flower layers to the card. So off camera I stamped the sentiment and now I'm going to build the tulip layers on the left side of the card. Just like the last card, I have cut two of the back layers so that I have a shadow layer for each of the flowers. This time I have a stem for a medium sized tulip, a stem for a tulip blossom, and then I'm going to add the two back layers for the two sizes of the tulips. I'm going to add a little bit of depth to the black petals with a white pencil. I'm going to trace the embossed design on each of the petals. I don't want to add too much white to the die cuts, but I do want them to stand out a little bit on the front of the card. You could also use a pale shade of Distress ink on the edges or make them really bold with a white gel pen. I like the look of the watercolor pencil because it reminds me of chalk on a chalkboard. It has a nice muted finish and it doesn't take away from the etching on the petals. All right, I'm going to start building all the layers for these two tulips. I have already adhered the two shadow layers flat to the card, and now I'm going to add the other petal layers with foam tape in between. Again, I'm using that guide as I add each of those petal layers to the tulips. 
Now you might think that it's odd to have black tulips, but black tulips do exist. In fact, there are many flowers that are black in color, and I love adding them to my garden. I'm currently on the hunt for black roses, which are really hard to find in our area. They're absolutely stunning. I also like how that black just pops against the pastel geometric background. This is such a fun card design. Now that I've added all of the layers, I'm going to use my tweezers to create a few little curls in the petals, and then I'll add the leaves. When I create a design with multiple flowers, I try to plan ahead so that some of the layers overlap others. In this design, the leaf on the larger tulip is going to lay over the tulip bud. I'm mimicking a garden when I layer flowers because leaves and flowers overlap. If the flowers are not touching or overlapping in some way, there may be a feeling of disconnect to the design. After the flower was completed, I finished the sentiment. Again, this was cut using vellum and black cardstock, and it's adhered right above the stamped sentiment. The last little element is a couple of black dots. These are going to go right around the flower and finish off the design. All right, now that the second card is done, let's take a look at both cards we created today. Here are the two tulip cards created using layers of Distress Oxide inks, watercolor, and flower layers. They each have a different vibe and feel, but both of them are simply unique with those watercolor backgrounds. The card we just finished has a funky pastel geometric background with layers of ink and color. Taking advantage of the water reactive inks gave us a really cool texture in the design. I didn't want to compete with that background, so I made the flowers out of black and gray cardstock with a few white highlights. These just pop right off of those pastel colors and create quite a statement. The second card is just as darling with its layers of rainbow inks. Again, I use those Distress Oxide inks to create layers of blended color. I just love how this tulip turned out with all its layers. While creating this flower, I shared a few layering tips with you, and I hope that you plan on trying those on your future projects. I'm going to show you a few detailed photos of these cards so that you can see all of the beautiful layers we created today. I hope that this project inspired you to pull out a few of your Distress Oxide inks and create some layered watercolor backgrounds. These techniques are simple to replicate and can be altered to match the theme of your card design.